each of you who have made the sacrifice to join us in worship and praise of the true and living God. As the children now have to take their leave with staff, we again encourage you to continue to ask God to afford his presence and his power. See, it's one thing to be excited when the music is going. It's another thing to have within you the spirit and the presence of God that continues to keep you to guard your heart and your mind. The devil don't mind you singing a hymn for a little while. Don't mind the drummer drumming, getting you emotionally lathered up. But once that stops, you better have something else. But once that terminates, you better have something else. To sustain you, to strengthen you, to keep you. That's why David said, hmm, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a light unto my path. I'll hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yeah, yeah, it, it's word, saints of God, that makes the difference. For those who are going through trial, those who are going through challenges, those who are going through faith testing, it's the Word of God that the Spirit of God is on assignment to use to strengthen us as we sojourn. Today, we want to again revisit the familiar, I was sharing with Brother Elvis, the Lord has burdened me for the next three Sundays. We're going to be looking at a particular topic, topic subject matter, as it applies to spiritual warfare. Yes, yes, yes. And so I need you walking with me these next three Sundays, beginning this one. We're going to be examining the word as it applies to our spiritual reality. There is a spiritual war going on. And we need to be prepared. We need to be equipped for the battle. We need to be ready for the warfare that is already in, in engaged, is already in motion, is already uh, in uh, progress. And we've got too many people who aren't prepared. We've got too many people who aren't aware. We've got too many people who are ignorant concerning yes, the things that are of God. And as a result of that, they become yeah. spiritual casualties. They become those who again fall by the wayside. We don't want you to be a casualty in this spiritual warfare. And so again, we bless God for the presence of Mr. Brown, the absence of our fellow clergymen. We thank God for each of you, for our leadership of staff, deacons, deaconess, trustees, the balance of our faith family, and to our dear sister who is here by way of the Ecclesiastes, uh, uh, Ephesians New Testament Church. We bless God for you. I'm going to ask you to rise with me. I'm going to read seven verses from these that have been selected for your hearing and then allow you to have your seat. From uh, Ephesians chapter 5, I want to begin the reading at verse number 25. And follow me as I skip to read again seven verses of the text. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Verse 22, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Verse 28, So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Amen. Verse 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Verse 2, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Verse 3, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. You may be seated. Today we want to open this track of this series and looking at and examining uh, this text as we look at again spiritual warfare. We want to begin with this subject matter, the family plan. All right, all right. Family plan. Well, when we look at Genesis, and I encourage you in your concert of study with me, go back to Genesis chapters 1 through 5. Not just 1 through 3, go back and look at chapters 1 through 5. For well, the story of this message, even this series, is all there. 
But today we want to examine again the family plan as it applies to the Word of God and this assault on the family and the plan. Somebody doesn't understand the reason why there's so much turmoil in the house. Somebody don't understand, Sir Jackson, why there's so much division and contention under the same roof. It's because there is a spiritual warfare that's going on. All right, all right. There is a battle going on for the eternal control of souls. And as a result of that, I need you to go back with me and examine the plan because somebody thought that God tore it out the Bible. Oh. And that matter of fact, I just heard some stuff recently that causes me to tremble because they even change in the, the content and the makeup of the family. Yes. Y'all heard about that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, man is passing their own laws to make the family something different from what God said it is. Are y'all going to bring me through this today? So when we understand in Genesis, the book of beginnings, God said in the beginning, based on how he established it, he made a man out of the dust of the ground. He formed a man and, and he breathed into the nostrils of the man. And the Bible says the man became a living soul. Isn't that right? And, 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 and so when we understand the, the chemistry and the makeup of humankind, God began his process with creating a man. So that when we hear somebody coming up with a different version, we better stick to God. Amen. We hear somebody saying, oh no, the family now is the any two partners who choose to agree and cohabitate. God said, no, that ain't right. That's not what I set up. That's not the divine command and law that I put in place for humankind. And so as a result of it, now we understand God began in creation in, in, in making a man, a male. He breathed into the man and the Bible says that the man became a living soul. We're going to get, we're trying to get to the text in light of a man so that we understand when the text says in verse 25, husbands, that, that can't be a woman. Come on. Child. I don't, care. I, I don't care how you twist and, and bind up two ladies, one of them can't be a husband. I, I don't know what's happening with our mentality that we just but, but, but in Genesis, God said, I made the man. And then he said, based on me making him, he said, it's not good for the man to be alone. All right, all right. So you know the story. The Lord took a rib out of the man's side. And from that, he formed the woman. And he brought the woman to the man. And, 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 and so based on it, then, then, then we find out again in the Genesis story that God even gave the man the opportunity to name the woman. Yes. <laughs> the, the Bible says that Adam called his wife name Eve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, li living. She, she was the mother of living concerning humankind. So now God has a man he's made. He has a woman that he's made. So that now when we look at this family, he says now husbands who are the male factor love your wives who are the female factor. All right, all right. So how a man going to love another man the way the Bible says he's supposed to love the woman? <laughs> how the woman going to love another woman the way the Bible says she ought to love her husband? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get back to the text. Husband, you're responsible based on spiritual leadership to provide that in light of your wife and your children. <laughs> That's why, again, we challenge the brothers who are not just on Father's Day to understand we've got a God-given responsibility to love our wives, to lead them to God, to encourage them to walk with us concerning this duty and responsibility should the Lord bless us to have children. How a man and a man go have a baby? How a woman and a woman go have a baby? See, the intent in Genesis by making two specific sexes is that in their union it might produce offspring. That's why he said be fruitful now and multiply. But because we confused, because we, we got this strange now intellectual ability, 
Now, now we confused ourselves, and now we become compromising in our position of being politically correct. And so God's warning the faithful. He's warning those of us who believe and know the truth of the Bible so that we don't acquiesce to the pressures of this day, the pressures of our culture. Is everybody listening in here? Yes. And see, you got an opportunity to warn some folk who's saying this other stuff. You got an opportunity to challenge some folk who got a different version. Matter of fact, Jesus says it this way, you're going to be my witnesses. All right. I'm not here to witness uh, what the world's talking about. I'm not here to repeat the world's agenda. I'm here to repeat the scripture. I'm here to challenge you based on the word that's going to stand forever. Yeah. All that other stuff going to pass away. All those other yeah. principles and, and, and great orations ain't going to matter in heaven. But the word is going to stand forever. Anybody know the word? All right, all right. Hallelujah. So we examine the text and we discover that, yes, it, that this, this is about spiritual warfare. This is about the family plan. Too many of us, again, we want to talk about family, but we don't want to follow the scripture in light of how family is supposed to behave. Yeah. That, that I share with people, yeah, the, the way people act in here is really the reflection of how they act in their home. Come on. Yeah, yeah, don't get it twisted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever's going on eventually is going to start showing up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You corn doing kind at home, you ain't going to be able to act long enough to be able to fool folks forever. It's going to sleep out somewhere. It's going to rise up somewhere. You, yeah, you acting a fool, it's going to show up. Eventually, it's going to seep out and somebody going to peep your up. Uh, they're, they're crazy. There he is. Yeah, 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 God wants us to be able, saints of God, to love one another through grace. Yes, yes. Let, let me put it this way. So, Joy, love will cover the multitude of sin. I ain't witnesses in here. Hey, hey. I'm so glad I'm covered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Don't need a blanket. Don't, don't, don't need a prayer cloth. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Are you going to pray with me? So, so now husbands are, are responsible in the authoritative rank and power of God to love their wives, to, to, to love them just as Christ loved the church. Our love must be a endemic and, and exemplary of the love of Christ so that in response to that love, the, the woman will then also be willing to subject herself to the husband's leadership authority. I share with people, when you think about it, why is it necessary that somebody be in the lead in a line? Why is it necessary? For order. It's just that simple. It's necessary for order. What, what if the, 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 the direction we're going and the opening we're going through only will take one person at a time? Somebody has to go first. Somebody has to be in the lead and somebody has to follow. And God simply saying, that's what I said. You can't have both of y'all trying to be in, in the lead. I set it up that way. And if the man ain't doing what I said now, you ain't responsible for trying to be a man. You responsible for, first of all, praying for him. Are y'all going to pray with me? You're responsible for taking him before the Lord. The Lord knows how to handle us, doesn't he? He knows how to straighten us out, doesn't he? But we don't know how to trust God, do we? Y'all going to get that later. He says again, wise in verse 22, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. See, God purposed in Genesis that a woman would be attached to a man. God purposed in the, in the beginning that a man, he was incomplete without a partner. That's why he made the woman. So, yeah, hey, brothers, right. we, we, we shouldn't be boasting, bragging about all our manhood because we ain't all that without a woman. <laughs> we incomplete without the sisterhood. All right. But look how we treat them. Well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, 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 at, look at the newscast. Look at, yeah, look at the newspaper. Yeah, go on the net. Yeah, look how we treat them. And, and, and earlier and earlier, we, 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 we treat, we're teaching the younger brothers to do the same insanity. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yeah. And, and, and see, 
mean, that's that's my burden. How, how are we going to help the next generation to yeah. learn how to treat a woman if we don't know how to treat her? Yeah. How, how are we going to help, to keep, help them to become men if we ain't men? I'm trying to help you to understand the gravity of this condition, this circumstance, this situation. We're talking about spiritual warfare. We, we're talking about in the beginning when this whole stuff broke out in, in heaven, it was Satan who started this whole rebellion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The warfare started in heaven when the devil decided that he wasn't satisfied with being the chief cherub in the heavenly host. And, and as a result of it, the, the Lord shifted him out of heaven and he said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. That's all of us human folk. Yeah. Because now the devil is on the prowl. What is he doing? He's going to and fro, seeking who he yes. has the power. Yeah. That's what he's doing. And he ain't doing it all alone. Yes. He's got an army. he got a crew. he got a group that's rolling in his behalf. And as a result of those demons that are on the loose as well, they're showing up at your house. Whether you're aware of it or not, yeah. Spiritual wickedness is showing up at your door. You gonna bring me through this? Yes, Lord. So yeah, 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 yeah. This is about the family plan, and because husbands aren't in tune with God, they, they, they walk off, they roll off, they leave their family subject to the devil's mess. All right. Come on now. Wasn't designed for the woman to be both the mama and the dad. No. He didn't design it for her to be the, the mother and then try to raise the boy to be a man. She ain't a man. She can't do that. All right. Are y'all going to pray with me? But if we don't understand the divine concept of the will and word of God, we as males will push the woman out there and we'll just leave her and abandon the family. What do we do with her? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And it's not just happening out there in the world. Well... Right. happening amongst some of us church folk. Yeah, yeah. That's why we need to pray. Yeah. That's why we need to plead before God in behalf of the faith family yeah. that we might be willing to repent. See, see, one of the dirty words of our day is repentance. Mm -hmm. People don't want to hear nothing about repenting. They sure don't want to hear nothing about hell. I just want to throw this here. Hell is real and it's still hot. Yeah. Nobody needs to know that, yeah, if you miss heaven, there's only one alternative. Right. We'll get to that at the end. But wives, you're responsible now as the husband loves you and takes on this role and responsibility of leadership seriously. You're responsible now to submit to your own husband. Yeah. Uh, if you are single uh, and don't have a, a husband, then you are under the covering of your pastor. I'm not your husband. He's simply your covering. As a result of you not having a, a man in your life as a husband, a woman can't take that role for another woman. Huh. Y'all gonna get this next week. Huh. A woman can't be a covering for another woman. That's why a woman can't pass door. She can't be the spiritual covering for another woman. That's known for a man. Y'all gonna pray. He says again, for verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head. God didn't stutter in the text, did he? He didn't put any caveats or exceptions in the script, did he? But here we are in 2012, confused as to what God said and how it ought to go. No, we're not confused. We just rebellious. <laughs> we're not confused. We just want to do it our way. It's not because somebody ain't preaching the truth. We just don't want to hear it. He warns me as a clarion caller. He said, first in the last day, people ain't going to hear this. They're not going to endure sound doctrine. That's why he said, don't be afraid of their faces. Yeah, they're going to be looking crazy. They're going to be looking strange. They're going to be trying to scare you. He said, no, no, no. You better pray, person. Some folks will even try to kill you, but you keep praying. Are there any witnesses in here? Oh, this, this is real. Somebody don't want this message to go forward. Somebody don't want the truth to be shared. First of all, the one who started the rebellion, the yeah. devil, sure enough don't want the word to be preached. Right, right. Are y'all going to help me today? 
So now he says that as the husband is the head of the wife, we're talking about the family plan, also as Christ is the head of the church, Christ is the savior of the body. So when we understand this divine authoritative role and responsibility of husband and wife, he says in verse 24, then therefore as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in most things. In some things. In a few things. In only the things you give him to be the, the, the man in. Oh, oh, oh. I, I know some of y'all wrote that in your Bible. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all stuck that in there. Yeah, yeah. God said, no, there is no exception as a result of my divine decree. So as a result of it, again, in this authoritative role, the husband is responsible for initiating the love factor in the family. The wife is responsible in response to the husband's love and leadership by God to subject herself uh, to his leadership based on God's design. And as the wife and the husband then walk together and work together, it then tells us as God blesses their union, children will be produced. A man and a man can't do that. A woman and a woman can't do that. So why would we be uh, why would we be uh, in agreement with laws that are against the word of God? Come on. Why would you be in support of somebody telling you we need to come up to the 21st century? And so, yeah, we need to adopt some new standards. All right. I'm praying for those folks. They don't know God. No, sir. They don't know His Word. Ah. And as a result of it, they're spinning out heresy. They're preaching and teaching abomination yeah. based on the God of Bible. Are you praying? I'm not praying for God to kill nobody. I'm praying for Him to save somebody. Yeah. Are you yeah. praying today? Yeah. So that as the product of the love union of a man and a woman, then children become the blessing in the hands of parents. That's why pastors are going to keep teaching adult males and, 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 and females that now ask parents, you're responsible for training up your children. We touched a little bit on that last Sunday too. We talked about again a committed Christ or a committed church. If we're lined up with Christ, then we're going to know as the adults, we can't afford to be following the children's lead. As adults, we can't afford to be letting the children decide whether they are or aren't going to come to worship with us. As adults, we got to be responsible for leading them, not following them. All right. So that then children are commanded by God to obey their parents in the Lord. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. They are commanded by God, the one who made them. You do know that sexual intercourse is simply the process that God divinely uses to produce children. Right, right. Children are a divine product of God's handiwork, not ours. That's why there are no mistakes when children are conceived. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the old days, Jerry, we thought that because somebody had sex with somebody, that was a mistake. No, the mistake was you didn't get married first. That was a mistake. The baby wasn't the mistake. <laughs> but in our ignorance, we got it all twisted. We trying to figure it out and set it up for God. God said, no, 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 go back to my script. Yeah, yeah. See, I said, first of all, let a man leave his father and mother and cling to his wife. And he said, at first, yeah. get married. Let me join you with the right person. And then as a result of that union, I'm going to, according to my will, cause conception so some children can come right. forward. Be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, sure. So now, when we look at, again, this, 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 this master plan, this family plan. He says a, a husband and a wife, when they come together, then children are to be conceived so that then children will learn how to love God. They'll learn how to follow God. They'll learn that by following your lead. See, see, in the olden day, uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't, we didn't get sent to Sunday school. We were brought. <laughs> so, somebody hear me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the olden day, you know, we weren't dropped off. Right. We were brought down. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a, a suggestion. It was the command. Yeah, everybody well and breathing. You were going to be uh, at church. Yeah, yeah. But what about baby? Baby don't live here. You live here and you're going to do what I say. 
say Amen. do. Yeah, yeah, that, that's obedience. And the Bible tells us in the first commandment with promise, children, honor your father and your mother. Not honor your mother and your father. It's significant based on the order. Based on the leadership role God has set in the body called the family. So that now this honor is respect. It, 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 con it confirms the need for obedience from the father through the mother to the children. If there's a disconnect between father and mother, guess what's going to happen to the children? The stuff we're reaping now. Are y'all praying? And we got the nerve to tell I don't know what this world got. I don't know what's wrong with these kids. Well, you have to study. Yeah. You need to be quiet. Come on. You have to man. check the scriptures. Fix it, sir. Fix it. God's showing us what's happening. Yes, you, sir. you don't want to know. Yeah, because you're guilty. You don't want to hear it. Because, yeah, there was a disconnect early in your house. So now you just, you just yeah, you're just going to be dumb when it comes to what God's saying. I don't know why it's happening. God said, yeah, you do. Because there's been a disconnect. Yeah, there, there's been a rift. There's been a divide. Yeah, two, he says, how can two walk together? Except they be in agreement. As a result of it, there's disagreement between the father and the mother. There, there's, there's disagreement between the husband and the wife. There, there's disagreement on whether we should be able to all go on Sunday to worship or whether you take the kids and I'm going golfing. <laughs> you take the kids and I'm going to play ball. You, you take the kids and I'm going to the game. You take the kids and I'm going this way. Mm. God say, you know what you're getting ready to do? Right. Come on now. Yeah, you you getting ready to see your family. Yeah. What you say? Yeah, fall into despair. That's right. Get ready to see your family. Yeah, you subjected them to it by your neglect. That's right. Now this is what you sow. Guess what? Hmm. Go also be what you. Y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah. I'm gonna be what you read. Yeah. yeah we, want to sow corn and think God ought to produce some candy yams. No. <laughs> Seeds was dropped in the ground was corn. That's what you're getting out of that. Are y'all going to pray me? He goes on and he says again, children now obey your parents, your father and your mother, for this is right. Honor them. This is the first command from the holy God with a promise. The reason why there's so many kids killing kids is because they have heard about the promise. Well, <laughs> the reason why there's so many deaths at an early age is because too many children have been raised, have not been trained, have not been right, developed in, in the fear and admonition yes, of the Lord. Yes, it starts with a God-fearing man, yes, a yes, of a God-fearing woman, yes, who in union will teach and train yes, God-fearing yes, children. Yes, Train up the child up yes, in the way that he should go. Yes, Don't let the child grow up in the way they want to go. There's a difference, isn't there? If you don't train them up, the world will. If you don't teach them up, the devil's got some teachers up that will. You won't take the time up or make the time up. Demons will babysit up. Y'all ain't hear me. Somebody didn't have enough, 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 enough understanding to fear God. Right. And as a result of it, the devil will say and do anything, won't he? Yes, he will. He'll show up in all shapes, sizes, and disguises. Yes, he right. has no reverence for God. That's why he didn't get another chance. Uh -huh. Are y'all going to help me? So yes. when we understand that children are the product of love, love is God, God is love. So only God can produce a life. Amen. Only God can Amen. take. Life. Somebody don't get it twisted now. Only God in his infinite, infinite wisdom and omniscience and omnipotence can ultimately produce a life. It is not only a natural phenomenon, it is a supernatural right. phenomenon. Explain DNA for me. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's divine stuff that now is formulated in the realm of human economy. <clears throat> yeah, so 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 how do you know? Because every individual, Sister Debbie, is marvelously and wonderfully made. That's God stuff. Yeah, 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 God gonna give me some more on that later on. He, he, he says, look at verse number three on page two. He said, that it may be well with you and you may live long uh, on the earth. See, uh, see, see, somebody think that just because you do everything uh, that the Bible says, uh, you ought to live 60, 70, 80, 90 years. Uh, that's, what not, that's not what God said. Uh, it sounds like that, don't it? Uh, but if, I, then if that was so, how come then that there are babies who die at birth? <laughs> I mean, the children who die at 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 15 years old. If that's the, just a generic reality of how we interpret what God said. No, no, no. God is saying, in the supernatural, as you honor me by honoring parents, then what I will do is I will ultimately, eternally, fix your life to be long. How long? Longer than long. Is that long enough? Uh, and understand, uh, it's going to be long uh, on the new earth. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody that knows the joy, there's going to be new heavens and a new earth. Uh, so God didn't mind. He just wasn't talking about this one. Yeah. 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 He just wasn't talking about this one. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to his name. And so when we look at it, examine the spiritual reality. He says the family plan uh, begins with God begins with the great God of creation uh, as he makes a man. Uh, he makes a man for the purpose uh, of him uniting with uh, a God-chosen, God-fearing woman. And in that union, uh, God wants them to reproduce uh, so the children uh, will be a part of uh, God's purposeful work. And as you teach them, uh, as you train them, uh, the family plan continues. Uh, not just to have a whole lot of folk running around, but ultimately to have more witnesses who belong to God. More witnesses in the presence of God. More witnesses in the kingdom of God. More witnesses in the presence of God. And this is the time, saints, we need to get ready. This is preparation time for the kingdom that is to come. Look what he says to fathers in verse 4. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. What does that mean? Don't keep badgering and beating down your children to the point now that they're discouraged. They don't want to hear nothing you've got to say. They watch your life. They're trying to figure out how your life exemplifies God. Oh. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, it begins with males. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your children see you running everywhere, doing anything, saying anything. Yeah, you see, see you beating their mama. He calling their own kind of names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they see that. Oh, yeah. What, what, what? God saying, where you at? Don't, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't lead them to the road to hell. That's what that is. Yeah, don't be the wrong example. Uh -huh. And y'all gonna bring me to the end of this? Yes. He said, no, no, no. Fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition. What's missing in the verse? What's missing in that verse? There's three words that's missing. Did somebody check the Bible? Of the Lord. Of the Lord is missing from there. Is that important? Yes, yes it is. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Human error, but we need to know that that verse ain't complete without the one who read it. Bring them up in the nurture, the admonition of the Lord, of God, of the Creator. There's some folks talking about, I believe we got here by creation. Oh, oh. <laughs> I see where you are. Oh, no, I, I, no there, there's no scientific evidence that proves that we got here by creation. <laughs> I see where you are. That's why the fool has said Psalm 14, 1, there is no God. Only a fool will stand in that position. Are y'all going to pray for the fool? Yeah. Going to pray for the foolish heart and mind? Yeah, yeah sometimes we were foolish. Still are in some cases, aren't we? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, but God wants to warn us because we are still saved. I, I'm so glad that I don't get saved and lost every time I forget something or deny God's authority over my life. I'm so glad that every time I sin, God doesn't erase my name. I'm so glad that everlasting life is a gift. I didn't deserve, can't earn, can't work for, but hallelujah, it is a gift. I have been given by God uh, enough faith uh, to accept the gift, uh, the offer of life. Uh, and now I ought to want uh, my wife and my children uh, to be in the kingdom with me. I ought to want uh, all of my relatives, uh, all of my loved ones uh, to be in the presence of God uh, eternally with me. Uh, it ain't just me saying that. Uh, then I need to be one who walks before them uh, that they might see the evidence uh, that God is leading me Paul said it this way, copy me as I copy Christ, follow me as I follow him, so that then you will be encouraged to know that where he leads me, I will follow. This is my life, in my life, but he gave me his. I'm so glad I don't have to be the light, I'm just a light bulb. to wrath. We're talking about the family plan. Don't let your children lead you. You got to take the responsibility of leading them. They might not like you, but it's better that they not like you and miss hell than them to like you and don't make heaven up. I don't want my children to be my friend. I want my children to honor me as they have. Friendship, I need them to obey my leadership. Come on, pray with me. I know that our children are adults now. That's all right. I understand now. Our relationship has to adjust now for them to make decisions as adults for themselves. But I can still, Sister Debbie, pray for our children. according to the flesh. God is saying there are other realms of relationship down here that are still significant as it applies to the will and work of God. Bond servants were uh, uh, indebted to uh, someone who uh, owed a debt uh, and they were indentured to pay off that debt by working for somebody else. Uh, we're the ones that made uh, bond servantship slavery. <laughs> Y'all gonna get that next time. We're the ones in our selfish, greedy humanness that made a bond servanthood one that was negative and one that was cruel and insensitive. Well, why don't you teach me? Slavery wasn't a problem when God established it. Yeah, yeah. We the one messed it up. We the one took it to crazy levels. Uh -huh. Sin caused us to do that. Yes. Yeah. We still haven't got the lesson straight. No, 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 no. Tell folks, yeah, slavery, prejudice, all of that stuff, yeah, is alive and well. Don't let nobody fool you. Prejudice still alive and well today. Yeah, racial profile and all that other human insanity is alive and well. Simply because we have learned the simple lesson of little children how to love one another. That's right. As God loved us. Y'all gonna bring me to the end. He says, bond servants in the indentured responsibility, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're doing it God's way, husbands and wives ultimately are going to work together so that when there's a bond servant, when there's an indentured servant, when there's a maid, we already know in advance how to care for them, how to treat them. Yeah, no, 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 no. You, you ain't here to make folk do stuff that you wouldn't do. That's right. Uh -huh. Come on now. 
<laughs> that, that, that's how selfish we are. I don't do windows. I don't do this. I don't do that. So now we're going to make them do all that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you need to do it first. Yeah, that's how that, that's how that game goes. You need to do it first. So as a result of it, hallelujah, yeah, then when you teach somebody glory to his name, you will teach them well how to take care of that kind of, kind of work and service. As a result of it, it says, now bond servants be obedient. Yeah, yeah, but you, you ought to be the kind of master who cares for the servant. Yeah, you ought to be the kind of overseer who genuinely is concerned about the servant. Yeah, you got somebody out there cutting grass, trimming, trimming hedges, and cutting trees down. Don't even offer them a drink of water. What you can see I'm paying them. Right after they expect. Oh, Together, you and the wife love the children, teach them, lead them, so that they will learn how to love God. Yeah. We become the initial examples of God's love. We become the introduction to our children to God. That's right. If we misrepresent Him, look at what happens. Mm -hmm. If we don't represent Him at all, look what happens. Yeah. So, sad. so you know, now, this ain't rocket science. It ain't, it ain't got complex. It's not confusing. I say again, the soul that sinned, this going to surely die. You know what he said? In the Genesis story, he told man, when you eat of that fruit that I told you not to eat the tree, how you good eat it, you're going to surely turn up, die. And as a result of it, when Adam and Eve did indeed do what God told them not to do, that was the sentence of physical death. That, that was the sentence based on them transgressing the law of God. And so we need to go back and review God's word because some of us are kind of rusty. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some parts of the story that it, it, it got gray, it got vague on us. Yeah. But you need to know the whole story in specificity. So that when you share with some, some of those uh, you know, uh, atheists and, and those you know, uh, humanists and all those other folks, you can share with them, oh, oh, oh do you have a Bible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, ha have you ever taken a look at Genesis 1? Uh, oh, 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 you, you say you don't understand? Well, yo, know, Genesis 2 is a repeat of Genesis 1 in more clarity and specificity. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and then Genesis 3 introduces us to the fall. And, and Genesis 4 then shares with us again what happened as a result of sinful nature and the fall. First murder. Y'all, 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 so that then when, when, when if a, a, a brother will kill another brother just because he angry, uh -huh. now I can understand why gangbangers are killing one another. I understand why. You know, they ask you what's said and it ain't the right answer. They'll shoot hey, you. Now. Yes, they will. Oh, Jesus. I don't understand why you're at the grocery store. Huh. They'll roll up and just start firing. Oh, help us, Jesus. <laughs> can understand that. Somebody crazy, mm -hmm. in spiritual rage, sick. Yeah. That's why they'll do what they do. You know some of them folk? Oh, yeah. God said then pray for them first. Yes. Then go in the Word so you can share some of it with them. You can't afford to be running scared from crazy. No, you know. Crazy folk need Jesus, don't yes. they? Yes. Pray for them. He says again in verse number 6, he says, don't, don't serve with eye service as men pleasers, 
But as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the what? Heart. Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy what? Heart. Heart, first one, and the. Boom. Why, why, why there? Because again, that is central to your being. That's right. God say, love me with all your being. Yes. Huh. That's the part that he's concerned about. Not the organ that pumps blood through your body. Yeah. You, you're not going to need that in eternity. Right. My Lord. He said, your body ain't going to need no blood in eternity. Right. What? Yeah, yeah, check the Bible. Yeah. Jesus, when he rose, he was a, a flesh and bone. No blood. Yeah. But he was real. Glory, I think I'm just going to worship Hallelujah. Praise your name. Thank you. Yeah, he can eat just like we eat. He can walk into a room and then have to open the door. He can materialize and dematerialize and materialize again. That's a mighty power of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, don't, don't serve with just eye service. When yet he has men pleasers. See, I didn't have some folk tell me, oh yeah, brother, I be there. You can, yeah. You can count on it, and then I'm looking for them. Well, then, then I have enough courtesy to call and say I ain't coming. I'm not going to have you waiting for me and not get a message to you. If I can't make it, I'm going to be late. Oh, well, that's it. It fits in the order. Right. Talk about an orderly God, right? You think that the order revolves around your personal schedule, huh? You think God's obligated to order His will based on your agenda? Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how some of us roll. Mm -hmm. We don't want to admit it to the pastor. Do he think he know everything? No. <laughs> I just know the one who does. Yeah. Right. And so he going to show me so I can help you. Y'all yeah. going to be helped? Yeah. Let's go. He says again, in verse number 7, he says, With good doing, do, with good will, doing service as in the Lord. See, everything we do now, the Bible teaches us, whatever we do in word and deed, we ought to do it all unto the Lord. That's so right. again, when I tell you I'm going to do that, I'm going to help you, I first of all know I'm making a vow to God. Yeah. When I share with you, I'm willing to do what's necessary to help you. I'm not telling just you, I'm telling God who orders my steps that he wants me to do that. And as a result of that, i got to make whatever the sacrifice necessary to just do that. Right. That's why, again, if you're praying, God's going to have you in the right place at the right time to be used to do the right thing. See, God ain't sending you nowhere to engage in no wrongdoing. God ain't sending you nowhere to support nobody in wrongdoing. And so you got to know the will of God is that ultimately that we might all come under the, under the authority of the Holy Ghost, who is God, who is on assignment to produce the will of God based on the Word of God, which are the works of righteousness. So y'all going to bring me to the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, God's will uh, is that in doing His will, uh, it might result in good service. Uh, God's will, D. Jackson, uh, is that none would perish, uh, but all might come to repentance. Uh, the family plan uh, is that through the love of Christ, uh, somebody uh, might come to Jesus uh, and be saved. Uh, God wants uh, every soul uh, to hear this good news uh, before judgment comes. Uh, because He says there's what's appointed for every man, uh, every soul to experience death, uh, physical separation of uh, uh, body and spirit uh, he says and after death uh, then the judgment uh, the family plan uh, based on the will of God uh, is that we not might have to face God uh, as strangers, uh, as uh, uh, enemies, uh, but we might be able uh, to bow before him uh, as children of God uh, as welcomed uh, saints of God, as members uh, of the body of Christ and the brothers and sisters we love Jesus used the Apostle Paul to write the majority of the New Testament and he oftentimes called the saints of God B-E-L-O-V E-D I'm so glad it just wasn't limited to the folk doing Paul's day I'm a beloved member of the body I'm a beloved Chapter number five. I got to be love my God. I got to be like Jesus. Because he purposed that I may become like him. Hallelujah. So when he has to take 
take his belt off. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, this is the belt. Yeah. We didn't have to hear that for you. Put it this way. 
do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Yes. Knowing that your own master, the, the real general, the one who's in charge, uh -huh. he's also in heaven. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? In heaven. So you see, somebody needs to tell some folk down here on the earth, Jesus is in heaven. You want to know where he is? Where is your Jesus? He's in heaven. Well, where is heaven? Well, look up. <laughs> Now tell me how far you can see with your naked eye. Where that stop at? Keep on going. That's where Jesus is. He about, he beyond your ability to physically see. He's on the right hand of authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the Father and He reside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's where Jesus is. He, he's making intercession now. It's a family affair. The Father and Son are agreeing on what we ought to receive. So every time I, I sin, Jesus reminds the Father he died for me. Every time I make a mistake, Jesus reminds the Father uh, he suffered for me. Every time I walk out of line, uh, uh, Jesus reminds the Father, uh, Father, let me, uh, just, just let me give the Holy Ghost a chest time. So, so he reminds him of who he belongs to. I'm so glad uh, the Holy Ghost still knows how uh, to lose this belt. Come on. I'm so glad uh, he knows how to whip me uh, without destroying me. Uh, I'm so glad uh, he knows how to correct me uh, without causing me to perish. Uh, and as a result of it, uh, I'm going to ask the Lord uh, to keep me uh, every day. Uh, I'm going to trust the Lord uh, to keep me uh, every day. Uh, I'm going to believe God uh, for preserving and defending me uh, all through the day. Uh, trust in the Lord. Yes, I will. I hear the saints singing. Yeah, Jesus is the light of the world. I hear the song singing. Yeah, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I hear the scripture saying, Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. I hear the songwriters writing, there is a name I love to hear. It's a family affair. Yeah, I love to sing about my big brother and my Savior. I love to sing about my big brother, my Savior, and he's also my Lord. I can love the Savior about my big brother, my Savior, my Lord, and my soon coming King.
Then, then, then we will know why the model prayer says that lead us not into temptation, but there ain't nowhere in there talking about, yeah, just step on the devil's neck, yeah, he's going to holler. Yeah, yeah, just bind him up in the mouth, no. Not your job, not your purview, not your sphere of authority. Yeah, yeah, that's the Holy Ghost job. We can handle it, can we? So today, saints of God, we got to agree with God. He's in charge. Yes, he got to be with God. He knows everything. Everything. He got to be with God. He knows the end from the beginning. Yes, We're simply sojourners, pilgrims, traveling through now an unfriendly land, a world that's not at home. This earth, as we know it now, is going to be destroyed. Uh -huh. Don't set up camp like this is it. Right. Don't start nailing down and holding down stuff like this is all that there is. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, you need to learn how to hold it loosely. God might we want you to be a pastor agent to be a blessing and encouragement to somebody who can't get it back. Are you ready to be a servant? He said if you are, then God's ready to use you.